Hello everyone. Once there lived a funny but wise poor man in a village. Many people went to him for advice. Even the king sought his advice on important matters. One day the king heard the rumor that this man talked to God every day. This angered him and he ordered the man to be brought before him. The king asked the man angrily, How could you hide such an important thing from me? The man, while trying to recall which one of his countless misdeeds could have come to his king's knowledge, replied, My king, I have hidden nothing from you, and I have never lied to you. I have always told you as much as I know about anything. Don't try to be smart. Is it true that you speak to God? asked the king. Oh yes, with God, the all-powerful, blessed be his name. Yes, I do. I speak to him every day, the man replied. And what does God say to you? the king asked him. Oh, nothing, nothing. Unfortunately, God does not speak to me, said the man, smiling pleasantly. Feeling much relieved, the king let the man go free. Friends, it will not surprise you if I say that I talk to God every day, because many of you do as well. But if I say that God always speak to me, then if not all of you, at least some of you may not believe me. If God speaks to people, why can't I hear God speaking to me, someone might ask. Friends, God does speak to all of us, even though he does not speak in the same way. He speaks to us in many different ways. Today's Gospel recounts the story of two men who went up to the temple to pray. Friends, Jesus told many parables. Some were told to his disciples, others to the crowds that followed him, still others were directly addressed to the Pharisees and Sadducees. Today's parable was directed to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Friends, the scriptures call those who in obedience do the will of God and are pleasing to Him as righteous. For instance, Abraham is described in the book of Genesis as someone who put his faith in Yahweh and this was reckoned to be upright. Matthew in his gospel writes that Joseph, the husband of Mary, was an upright man. The Gospel of Luke states that both Elizabeth and her husband Zechariah were righteous before God and strictly observed all of the commandments and observances of the Lord. Yes, God is indeed pleased with those who pursue righteousness by keeping God's law and seeking holiness. So, the people to whom Jesus addressed this parable were not bad people. They were determined to uphold the law of God. Unfortunately, as time went by, they became self-righteous. They saw themselves as holy, righteous and favored by God and looked down on others. Seeing their self-righteousness and contempt for others, Jesus told them a parable involving exactly the two different kinds of people, a Pharisee and a tax collector. Friends, according to the story, both went to the temple to pray to God. The Pharisee bragged that he was not like the others who were greedy, dishonest, adulterous and especially not like the tax collector and that he fasted twice a week and gave a tenth of his income to the synagogue. The tax collector, on the other hand, admitted to his sinfulness before God and men and asked for forgiveness. Jesus ended the parable by saying that the tax collector returned home justified. That is to say, God had reconciled him to himself and his grace was with the tax collector as he returned home. 
he returned home forgiven. But the Pharisee left just as he had come, locked up in his own self-sufficiency and close to himself to the grace of God. Friends, what are the lessons we can learn from this parable? First of all, when we go to worship, we must guard against being self-righteous, proud and contemptuous of others. We must not compare ourselves with others in order not to become boastful when we find ourselves better than others. Because when we see ourselves as better than others, we tend to despise them, forgetting that we too are sinners and are in need of God's forgiveness. St. Paul writes that our standard for comparison is God himself, but we all fall short of his glory. Secondly, we must remember that we do not go to worship God to feel good about ourselves or to impress him. There is nothing you and I can do to impress God. We go to worship God only to acknowledge our sinfulness before him and to seek the only thing that can bridge the gap between God and us, God's mercy and forgiveness. Friends, our good works alone are insufficient to gain a salvation and eternal life. We need the grace of God which is given to those who seek His mercy and forgiveness for their sins. Even though we deserve to be punished for our sins, God is merciful and has allowed Jesus to pay for our sins. Thirdly, we must worship God with the right disposition so that we shall not leave God's presence the same way we came into it. We rather, like the tax collector, shall live justified, transformed and at peace. Amen. God bless you.